Yulia Navalnaya in Berlin, the widow of Putin's most famous rival, Alexei Navalny. He died suddenly in a prison camp. His wife holds the Kremlin's leader responsible. There could be no any negotiations and nothing with Mr. Putin because he is a killer, he is a gangster, he is the person who brought my country to the war. Yulia Navalnaya intends to continue Navalny's fight. As do Ivan and Natasha. They're members of a Russian anti-war movement. How does it feel to be a Russian national traitor? In exile, they're campaigning for a free Russia and against the war their home country is waging against Ukraine. But what can a protest like this from afar achieve? Yulia Navalnaya in Berlin. She wants to fulfill her husband's final wish to protest Putin's re-election. And encourage Russian opponents of the regime. Thank you for the hope. My deepest condolences. Thank you. You're the best. It's so nice that you want to continue your husband's mission. He was a great hope for us. It died along with him, but it's come back in you. We're from Kirov and stand by you, and St. Petersburg. Following Navalny's death, his wife addressed Russians via YouTube. All of Putin opponents should go to their polling stations at noon on March 17th and stand together against Putin. In Russia, it's the only legal opportunity to gather in public. Many Russians in exile abroad also followed Yulia Navalnaya's call. I want Putin to disappear from the lives of Russians. He is the most terrible thing that has happened to Russia since the Stalin era. Yes, it's important to show that we are against war, we are not Putin, and we are against Putin. He's a killer and he's a criminal. He remains in power, but many opponents of the regime remain in Russia and they feel isolated. We have to show them that they are not alone. I know that it makes little sense to protest here, but that's exactly what Putin wants, for us not to be seen. Weapons for Ukraine! Good evening, my name is Natalia. I'm from a Russian survey service. We're conducting a survey. Would you have time for me? Only if it's quick. Go ahead. Thank you. A few days earlier, we meet activists from the global network Free Navalny. They've rented co-working spaces to run their anti-Putin campaign from. They're calling voters in Russia to speak to Putin supporters about the war in Ukraine, its victims and the costs. Natasha has been here from the beginning. We aren't supposed to mention her surname. We try to argue very carefully against the Russian government. Perhaps they have never been confronted with a different opinion in their lives. We want to make people like that think. It's a difficult task in times of military censorship because anyone in Russia who criticizes the Russian army for its actions in Ukraine risks going to prison for several years. Many calls go unanswered, but the activists carry on, just as Alexei Navalny once said. But how effective is such a protest, especially at a distance? 
у меня тоже вот возникло какое-то ощущение, что мы сидим и ждем, что Путин кто-то громко. Мы сидим и ждем, что Путин кто-то громко. Мы все разговариваем, но мы не затрагиваем тему, а как мы, собственно, сверху. Мне кажется, что это может быть ошибка. Putin is the kind of person who only understands power if he understands anything at all. A view that is shared by more and more opponents of the regime. But unlike their like-minded peers in Russia, they can turn their anger into action here, in freedom without fear of draconian repression. A group selfie, admittedly in Berlin, but the message is aimed at Russia. Navalnaya has over one million followers on Instagram. Immediately after her husband's death, she declared she would continue his work. A month later, her followers in Berlin are welcoming her like a star. Could she become the new face of the Russian opposition? I hope that she stays alive, that what happened to Alexei Navalny doesn't happen to her. For me, she's already the face of the Russian opposition. She'll soon show her potential as a politician. She could become president. Of course, she is taking a big risk. She has already lost her husband, but has the strength to fight on. If she was in the list, she would be the only one in this list who would make the things better. Yet not everyone here has come to the Russian embassy to protest or, if only symbolically, to vote against Putin in the rigged election. We're for Putin. We're for Russia. For the best president. No, we're not against Putin. No. We want everything for Russia. And yet Russian supporters of Putin are not in the majority in Berlin. They have to listen to the protests if they like it or not. Yulia Navalnaya has been standing in the queue for six hours now, along with hundreds of others. Some here are worried whether the opposition politician will be able to leave the embassy safely after casting her vote. Of course it's dangerous. It's the Russian embassy. They'll stop at nothing. The German police can stand for democracy, but inside the embassy they have no influence. She's made it. A change of scene. We're back with Natasha, Ivan and their friends. They've called their group Free Navalny Germany. Natasha has been living in Germany for a while. How does it feel to be a Russian national traitor? Natasha is 19 years old. She's never known a Russian president other than Putin. Dima and Ivan only recently fled Russia to escape mobilization and repression. We want peace for Russia, we want democracy for Russia, and we, want, we just want people to live in freedom and not be afraid. Um, of them to get in jail every day. Now I think we have the responsibility to to stop it before Putin wants to like blow up the whole world with uh, his uh, nuclear weapons. With these stickers, they want to draw attention to their work and show that they exist. We would like to be able to put up these stickers in Russia and not have to fear for our lives and our freedom. Ideally, there would be no need to post these stickers. 
if there was no war and no Putin, if Russia had taken a different path a long time ago. But that can no longer be reversed. That's why things are the way they are now. We have to keep on fighting. A sigh of relief. After about 20 minutes, Yulia Navalnaya comes out of the Russian embassy. Yulia, why are you here? You're probably wondering what I wrote on the ballot paper, who I voted for. Of course, I wrote the name Navalny. It can't be that during the presidential election campaign, just one month before the election, Putin's most important opponent, already imprisoned, is murdered. She's not yet ready to answer the journalist's many questions, as if she was still gathering her strength for her new role, a politician who wants to challenge Putin from exile. Up until now, she had only wanted to be an advisor to her husband, the most important member of the opposition. After his unexplained death, though, she seems to not have another choice. What's your message? Wait, wait, wait. Just to be brave. One, one day, very soon, we will win. Thank you. Thank you. Her anger at Putin and his secret services is enormous. Alexei Navalny was once rescued from a Novichok poisoning in a Berlin clinic, yet he returned and was immediately arrested. He continued to fight from prison until he collapsed there and died. It couldn't be any messages to Mr. Putin, nothing. That's it. Now she steps into his footsteps. She's willing to take the risk for the fight that made her husband pay the ultimate price for a free Russia. And she's not alone. <laughs>